Hi, I'm Tom with the Woodworkers Toolbox. Today, I'm in my garage workshop forming the chamfers on my stickly footstool. I'm building the footstool based on the drawings found in this book by Robert Lang. Chamfers are a common design element in arts and crafts furniture, but they'll also help protect the wood from splintering, especially on the bottom of the legs. Because those chamfers are gonna serve a decorative purpose, I need a way to cleanly and consistently cut chamfers on the top and bottom of the legs and on all four sides. That means I need to form 32 identical chamfers. Oh, hi Fred. Well, hi Tom, how you doing? What brings you by? Yeah, you know, well, we've been having all this bad weather recently. I thought I'd come over, check up on you, see how you and your family are doing. Oh yeah, me, me and Mrs. Fred are doing just fine, yeah. You got something on your lip. Yeah, the mustache. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it does look nice. I, I really do like it. And... I mean, that is disgusting. Well, I better go and beat myself a path back to the house. Bye-bye. Well, neighbor Fred and I discussed his fake mustache for longer than I really wanted to. But hey, he seemed pretty excited about it, so who am I to rain on his parade? Okay, enough of this silly stuff. It's time to get back to work. I could form the chamfers with a router with a 45 degree chamfering bit installed, but I'm not crazy about the idea of balancing the router on the end of this little board. I'd have to build some sort of jig or fixture in order to accomplish that. I could also use a chisel or a block plane to cut the chamfers, but I'm working with a piece of Douglas fir here that is really dry and it's been prone to splintering and I'm worried about blowing out the ends. Also, the wood can be very soft and even with a sharp tool, you can get these areas where the edges just compress the wood. Also, I'm still learning to use hand tools and I think you can probably see that these chamfers are just not consistent. I don't think there's any way I'll achieve the results I'm looking for on all 36 chamfers by hand. Instead, I'm gonna use my 12 inch disc sander in combination with this fixture that I created for a previous project. And with sanding abrasives, I'll have far less chance of splintering the wood and crushing those soft grain fibers. Are you still watching? If so, why not click the like and subscribe button on this video and check out the video description for some important information. I'd really appreciate it, thanks. I've added a long piece of wood at a 45 degree angle so I can use it as a fence to index the workpiece to. I've also affixed a stop block so I can get the workpiece in the same position each time. Then I adjusted the fixture's position so the workpiece would make contact with the sanding disc at the top of its rotation. And with the sanding disc spinning in the forward direction, I'll be sanding into the fibers of the wood, which should reduce tear out. I've also set up my quill stop so that the quill will close the gap between the sanding disc and the workpiece plus a sixteenth of an inch. So there's nothing left to do now but to try it. Wow, this fixture worked out really well. 
and the results are really good too. These auto adjust toggle clamps were just a joy to use. Originally, I had these traditional toggle clamps installed on this fixture, and even though they hold well once you get them set up, there's a couple disadvantages to these, which I cover in a short video that I'll link to in the description. Yeah, the, these are really nice. I wanna interrupt here for a second and say thank you to Scott Markwood of MyGrowthRings.com for being the first subscriber to the channel and for being the first paid supporter on buymeacoffee.com. If you appreciate the type of content offered here on this channel, please consider heading over to buymeacoffee.com slash the woodworkers toolbox and giving your support. Shop dog. Down here, boy. Gotta stay down off the bench. Well, shop dog's really struggling. This dust collector injury has really hit him hard. And the vet suggested that I try to keep the weight off his legs as much as possible. So I rigged up this system here with hand screw clamps. Woodworkers, am I right? But even though he's struggling, he's healing fast. And the vet promised me that he'll make a full recovery in time for our next video. The other bit of good news is the project's going great. These chamfers really look nice. So really getting close to wrapping this project up. Please come back and see how it turns out. Thanks for watching. Bye.